Okay. Right, I guess we need we'll, to do the roll call. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call the meeting to order then, uh, and we'll get started. I, I would appreciate it, Erica, if you could help in this occasion with the roll call. Sure. Um, Serena Costa Vea? Present. Adrián Dominguez? Present. Rodolfo Guajardo? Present. Armando Garza? Present. Valentín Cuella? Jeffrey Pig? Present. Dave Akers? Present. Salvador Mercado? Mm. Felix Canales? And Rafael Tawil? We have quorum. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, uh, just going through the agenda, uh, we've completed the call to order and the roll call. Um, as far as general citizen communication, I see none listed on the agenda, nor do I see any minutes that are needed to be reviewed or approved. Uh, no communication, there is a staff report uh, listed. So we are to point number five in the agenda. Am I correct that that's where we should begin uh, in the absence of anything prior? Okay. Okay, so we will go with, uh, then uh, there is a staff report indicated for value capture videos. Okay, uh, it, uh, Mr. Chairman, Danny McGee, City Traffic Director. Uh, it was my intent to uh, try and show at least a portion of these videos to the uh, committee today, but since we're kind of struggling a little bit, and I think some of us don't have access to video, uh, probably what we'll do is I'll email links to these. They're available on YouTube. And what these videos are is uh, the city planning department uh, hosted um, representatives from the city of Austin, uh, Corpus Christi, and uh, I think of Horizon City, and, and they talked about how they're implementing impact fees, which is the first one. If you see there on your list, if you have the, the agenda. The other one is the city of Corpus Christi has already has a street maintenance fee, and, and they go into that discussion. And then the other one is, you might have heard the word, uh, for lack of a better way of pronouncing it, TRZ, TRZ is a transportation reinvestment zone. And so the, the going to explanations of how they implemented them and what, what they are and how they're uh, alternate ways for the city to raise funds to uh, fund infrastructure. And so what we can do is we can send all these links to you via email so you can watch them on, I guess, on your own time. Like I said, it was my intent to show a, a few minutes of each one just to explain them. But uh, since we're having this, I guess our first meeting is a little awkward as far as connecting. Um, I'll go ahead and, and send those out if that's okay with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's take a look at those. Okay. And uh, just uh, uh, the, the items that I have on the agenda today, with the exception of, of, of number six, they're kind of all tied together as far as uh, with the traffic impact on the ordinance. But uh, I'll, I'll describe that more when we get to that item. Dan, if I could, sure. If I could just ask a, a question while we're reviewing those value capture videos. Um, how are current um, streets maintained as far as the revenue source that comes in to be able to maintain city streets? Um, if you're talking about like the public works department, um, if you want to see. I don't know if this is what you're asking, kind of maybe going a roundabout way of answering your question, but if you want to see what the city has spent in maintenance fees, I mean, in maintenance funds the last few years, I know Mr. Orfila from Public Works has a presentation he gave during our budget cycle meetings, but basically it comes out of, uh, I think it, it was general fund. I'm not sure if there was any. So, so people pay taxes and then the tax base comes in and some of that tax base covers the maintenance fees to pay for streets? Uh, from what I understand, yes. Like I said, I, I don't remember if there are any dedicated, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, bond, bonding money for that or not. I'll have to check on that. But okay. I, I, do, I do recall, like for instance, in this last year, there was I think $4 million allocated for streets and 
that money had not been allocated in a few years for what I understand. And even that money was used, you know, they, they kind of went back to that money to use to cover a lot of the COVID expenses that the city's going through. I guess the question comes into, are, are we going to be going to the residents that sit within that street to provide um, some kind of annual street maintenance fees, or are they going to, you're going to be looking at the developer has to pay up front uh, 20 years of street maintenance fees. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, uh, actually, a lot of those questions will be answered in those videos and in the discussions. Um, I, I don't want to, I guess, spoil the surprise ending for you, be a spoiler, but uh, there's there's different ways of doing it. And that's one of the things that we're, we're going to be, I guess, asking you guys your opinion on. Uh, okay. Like Im impact fees are assessed across the board on any new development. And then there's, you know, but the city has to do a very massive study to show what the 10 year uh, forecast is and how that money is going to be used. You know, the city just can't say, pay me this much of an impact fee and we'll just decide how we're going to use it. We have to show how that impact fee is uh, calculated and then we have to show how that is going to be spent. Okay. And the first one is, is the city of Austin. And they've been working on it since 2016, I think. And they're still not done because it got very political and uh, they, they, since Austin's a lot bigger than us, you know, it took them a while to calculate all the, all their major thoroughfares and how they were going to do their capacity program and all that. Well, there's value then for us watching the, the, the videos, obviously, to understand that a little bit better, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and that was the reason I said I wanted to just get you started and just to show you that at least the, the explanation of how they're calculated. Uh, there's there's uh, there's law that backs it up now is that um, you, I'm sure you've heard, maybe you, Jeff, as an engineer, but there's a term called rough proportionality. In other words, um, I think we discussed this many months ago. If a developer comes in and he's the first one of where a, a new street is going to be a thoroughfare, well, the city in the past has asked, well, you're going you're gonna to pave the whole thing, six lanes across and et cetera, et cetera. But he may only have 10 acres of development. So he can say, well, that's not proportional to what I'm doing. You know, So that's, that's where that term comes from, is that the, the federal government and Texas courts have ruled that what the city asked for it has to be proportional to how much development that person is doing. OK. Um, and, and, the, and that's one of the things that's just, it's described there. There's, there's two, there's two actually two separate laws. One, one is this rough proportionality one and the other one is impact fees. They're separate parts of the Texas local government code. And I, but I think once you go through the, uh, the videos, you'll get a, a better comprehension of it and we can discuss that at the next meeting. Thank did you. I, did I answer it or? Yes. Okay. All right. So like I guess so we'll we'll send you the, the link to those videos and and then feel free to contact me on any questions you have meanwhile before our next meeting. Okay, thank you Mr. McGee. We'll be on the lookout for those videos and and thanks for offering to send those over to us. Moving to the next point of discussion and possible action on the following. Uh, it is mentioned that we will have discussion on Vision Zero and what other cities are doing. Okay. Um, does everyone remember what Vision Zero was or do you need a, uh, just a quick recap? Maybe if you could recap uh, briefly, I do recall. I, I'm familiar with what uh, Vision Zero is, but uh, it's a zero, zero death, zero damage right. zero accidents uh, related to traffic safety. Yeah, um, and, and please and please uh, throw an eraser at me or something if I get too winded, but uh, this is based on a concept. It kind of goes against uh, the way we do things in the US prior to this, is where we design something, you know, that's the best we can do for the money and, and safety. And, but this, this is a European concept that says, even one death is too much, you know, regardless of the money. And so this initiative took ground, you know, gained some momentum and along the way it got more formalized and um, organizations grew out of it. And the city of Laredo voted, I think it was uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, two years ago, to become a Vision Zero City. And that means that they're dedicated to the concepts that uh, lives must be protected, basically at all costs. 
And in line with that, we've been trying to work out a plan for that. Um, there was a group convened last year. Let's see, we're in 221. So about a year, it was early, uh, early 2019, I think. And the different departments in the city and they're putting together a plan, but it lost momentum. So we, we, we need to um, get that group back together again where each department, the police, fire, public works, traffic, all have input as to what, how they can contribute to that vision zero where nobody's getting hurt. So um, as part of that, there are, are like six cities in Texas and it's, it's the major ones where Laredo got on the bandwagon, but we're kind of the outlier um, as far as the size. It's you know Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, um, and we're, we're kind of just uh, following their, you know, on their coattail, as they say. So we meet with them every once a month and you know, we're kind of just getting ideas of how they're doing things. They have a lot more staff. They can look into the numbers and see how they're doing. But um, as a city, just, I'm not sure if we're just doing a, a good job or it's, it's just sure luck, but uh, in, in 2018, I think we had like over 30, 30 uh, vehicular de deaths. And in 19, we had 12. And in 20, it was, if I remember right, it was another 12. So our numbers, came down I'm just I know, I know the the police department has a lot of initiatives you know that they work with text dot on license I'm sorry on uh, seat build usage and stuff like that so but we want we want to make sure we build on, on on top of that you know from 36 to 32 down to 12 is a great number but that's still 12 too many so we got to work on that so uh, maybe for for the next meeting if uh, each of the members of the committee, if they have ideas on what they would like to see us work on, um, we're still we're still trying to enforce parking regulations across the city. That's one thing we're trying to do. Um, we were still trying to pass. Uh, I think if you remember many months ago, we tried to see about getting uh, panhandlers or anybody asking for money off the streets to make sure that they didn't get hit. Not that there's anything wrong with panhandlers on the street or anybody selling anything, but they were, were between cars. Do you remember that discussion? Uh, so we're, we're going to continue working on those, um, but I just want to see if the if, if the committee had any certain aspects that they want us to look to, into, um, any ideas, you can visit the Vision Zero website and get some ideas or, or just contact me or just or your own as you drive around town and see opportunities to increase safety, let us know. How many, how many fatalities did we have last year, you said then? Uh, I believe it was 12. Let me, Erica, can you, are you there? Yeah, it was 12. And do we have the, the areas identified? Is there some kind of pattern that you all are seeing year after year of, of where the traffic fatalities are occurring? Uh, I don't remember if we plotted those yet, but we do have all the severe accidents and I can, I can have it ready for the next meeting. Because the, the way, I, the way I see it is, uh, a lot, a lot of these accidents, um, the severe ones, uh, it's just some, sometimes it's just lucky to become a fatality or, or vice versa. So we treat those kind of the same way. So I'll make sure that we should, uh, um, I show those. Like for instance, I'll give you a good example. Uh, we may have an accident that's classified as being run off the road you know, where they cross, they cross, you know, across traffic. Well, if, if they didn't hit anything, it's listed as kind of a minor accident. But the only thing that didn't make that accident into a more severe one or fatality was that there was another car coming. Does that make sense? Yes. So we, want to make, we want to make sure that we don't just treat the ones that happen to hit something as opposed to the ones that could have made it a lot worse. Okay, I, I think uh, what I was looking at is we're going to look at, at trying to come up with a plan for to improve upon Vision Zero. Okay. And obviously, I think we want to look at um, initially on patterns year after year. Um, where, where there's uh, frequent accidents, we might want to look at uh, the cause of the accident. Um, if it involved um, uh, handheld devices uh, of that nature, because if we're going to take it from 12 to zero, um, we, I think what we probably need to do is find out a, some information as to, as to where and why the accidents are occurring. And if there's, if there's no uh, relevance, once we did that, we look back at say two years or three years, or whatever you know, number of years you want to go back to try to find some kind of pattern um, 
then we can look at what other ways that we can possibly improve uh, the traffic situations in the range. Let me let me do. Uh, we we can do the last three years. You know the the thirty two to twelve to twelve again, and we can put this on a map and then show the relative. Relevant statistics, you know, what, what were they doing, when it happened, time of day, time of week. We can do those. Because uh, it might be as simple as, as um, installing a, 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 a light um, to, to provide more lighting in an area where it might be dark. It might be as simple as getting more notification out to um, reduce the handheld device use, you know. Th those are the kind of things that we're going to take it either way. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, anything else you want to see? Anybody else in the committee? Yeah, I, I, well, first I agree with Vice Chairman Wiggs points. Uh, I think some demographics would be good, like uh, commercial versus non-commercial vehicle involvement. Okay. Um, is there any seasonality? Um, thinking in terms of, um, you know, it, 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 I, I mean, Laredo by nature has a lot of non-Laredoans on the roads in Laredo on a daily basis, but perhaps uh, if there's anything related to uh, heavier traffic periods like Paisano period or uh, anything else that's, you know, any seasonality to it. Yeah. Uh, the, the police department has a very good uh, team for the statistics to pull the crash reports together. So it shouldn't be a problem to put all this together. On, on average, is that is it just under ten thousand accidents or crashes in the city of Laredo per year? Just a good example. That's the number I remember. And in your experience, how does that relate to other cities of our size or per capita, or, or how would that scale? Um, I, I really haven't looked at it on a city by city basis. Um, I have looked at it. If you remember, I, I used to work elsewhere, and we we, we compare roadways. But that those are typically high speed roadways as opposed to uh, city miles. So, but we, we can look at that just to see if, if there is such a number to compare. I'm not sure there will be, but I can look into that. Very good. I, I know in talking to our Vision Zero group, they, they all have a fatality town and that's, that's easy enough to get. I just don't know if we can compare apples to apples because they may be bigger and, and we have to compare, you know, that kind of thing. But we can sure get that. Very good. Those are great okay. ideas. Anything, anything else anybody have? Okay. Uh, well, uh, if, if unless there's further discussion on Division Zero, we'll we'll move on. All right. Um, please uh, let us you know speak up if there is any additional comment. Uh, next point is discussion of possible recommendation of the following uh, discussion on traffic impact analysis ordinance. Okay. Um, uh, for, I think everybody was here at that time, but uh, back when I first came on with the city, I, I, I approached the committee and kind of gave my ideas of, of what that should look like. Uh, I wanted to take this a little different approach this time, just to try and revive this and, uh, and, we may not get the answers today and it's something you want, I want to think about for next meeting. But what I, I wanted to see was, I guess I can, I can describe what the, uh, the point of this is, but I, I want to get your ideas on what you would want to see and what the way we can apply that. And uh, I guess I, I can preface the whole conversation by saying a, a traffic impact analysis ordinance. Okay, all, all it's going to do is that it's not going to assign it's not going to assign um, a dollar value to anything. It's just a way for a developer to let the city, and in some cases to let TxDOT, the highway department, know how much traffic they're going to be generating. Okay? And then the extension of that would be later on, uh, going back to the first, uh, I think it was item number five, the, the impact fees, then that's where, that's where those things would start up. Is, uh, is to say how much how much of that cost should be borne by a um, a development? Okay, so I think we had the discussion. I remember even Jeff Jeff has some very good points about uh, as an engineer how the, he sees it from the developer. And I, I want to hear those ideas again, Jeff, if you don't mind. But uh, what it comes down to is that we have a lot of growth, 
and there hasn't been any any plan to account for that growth um we just keep adding and adding more developments to a street with no thought uh, or foresight as to what it's going to impact downstream um, I, I think mr acres you, you work out in the mines road area uh if i remember right uh yeah the the near, oh, near the keel yeah. industrial park not not exactly on my throat but more. all right so there, there's many industrial parks out there that um have only one or two connections to to mines road you know we have a traffic signal there yeah we keep adding more and more developments to the back of those of those uh, existing uh, developments and so we we need to see at what point you know say if we're already at capacity how do we justify adding more without doing any kind of improvements to the intersections so like i said it, uh, this first part that i want to look at passing or presenting to council is uh is to get your ideas of Many cities already have traffic impact analysis ordinances, and it's just a real easy thing to copy theirs and present it here. Uh, for instance, the city of San Antonio uh, has a very good one, in my opinion, um, where they, and I won't say any numbers, I don't wanna skew or, or bias you in any way, but they require uh, a development, do a traffic impact analysis for a certain amount of cars, and the, the more cars they, uh, they generate, the further out they have to be uh, responsible for making mitigation to the roadways. Um, the city of Austin has a good one also, but theirs doesn't kick in until the numbers are a lot higher. Uh, like I said, I, wanna, I don't wanna see those numbers and, and, and bias in any way, but that's what I wanna get your ideas. It's easy for me to say, okay, here's, here's what we should do, um, but I wanna get your ideas before I, I, I present that. If, if you have any to share. Sure, I yield, yield the floor to Vice Chairman Quigg for any comments. I guess in regards to traffic impact and also I think it, it's, a, it's an important necessity to, to follow through with. I think the, the thing that we need to be concerned with is the amount of extent that the traffic impact analysis goes to on the roadway sections. Um, and how we're going to address the impact with respect to existing developments and um, when people pull building permits to to already work within platted pieces of property and so they would may or may not be subject to uh, any analysis and where there uh, a new warehouse may come in and our new trucking operation but in a platted development and they're going to bring on a significant amount of of movement through the roads but they have no no impact so that that they need to be faced with but only new developments um are assessed with traffic impact so we need to, to be able to understand that we're going to place this upon the new developments uh we need to know how it financially impacts them number one and and uh, what the benefit is to to the development and to the city and i think there is a, a benefit it's just how we go about um assigning the level and how far of an impact do you want to go away and how it impacts traffic as it moves further down in the system okay. yeah that, that was my recollection as well as that in, in our previous discussions is that we th there was agreement in the kind of the the, the utility of a, a traffic impact analysis but it really it, it, the, the the more complex question is you know well if you you know let, let's say a tra it, it, even if it wasn't with a a new um you know, in addition to a particular area of town, that perhaps that that area already has a challenged traffic situation before adding the uh, the the new new arrival, and uh, you know how uh, you know the, the the determination of are they truly adding issues to the area, or it is already congested and has a pre existing problem, whether looking to buy uh you know i, th I think the uh, uh mile marker 13 kind of has that situation you know it's, it's already congested uh you, you throw you know uh hundreds of thousands of square feet of warehouse space into an already congested area a traffic impact analysis is going to heavily burden those new arrivals um and, and just you know kind of 
uh, outside of scope of a traffic impact analysis, but what what how does that affect you know the economic development of Laredo, Texas, of of, of how those are um, managed and, uh, and 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 implemented? So that, that's that's I, I remember the you know kind of the, that context in our previous discussions, uh, but I do also you know as a part of that I do remember uh, there was you know a kind of consensus on support that yeah it makes sense that we do want to do this and and seeing what other cities do but you know just to be aware of of the pros and cons of perhaps was a a best way to implement along with the, the just implementing okay. well uh if you don't mind me bringing up a, a rhetorical question i guess for lack of a better term um i'm, I'm going to use your example the mile 13 um I've been asked to look at that to try and improve traffic, and I've come up with some ideas. I'm working with Texas on that. Uh, it's, we're still studying that, and but I think there's opportunities to even improve that without putting new bridges in. And uh, Texas already has plans for that. But let, let me let me just bring up bring up a, a what if scenario. Okay, um, right now that area, using that as an example, has basically got two ways to go in and out. Okay. Uh, on papers, two ways. I really consider it more like a a 1.2 or 1.25 ways to get in. And let me explain what I mean by that. It is we have an elevated, you know, a structure to get into the area there at carriers. Okay, so that doesn't depend on the train being there or not. Okay, the other location at Union Royal, uh, it's an aggregate intersection, and depending, I guess, the um, how heavy the traffic is. Uh, there's countless trains that go through there. And so that really cuts down the capacity. Um, so it really makes it into a, a less than a whole um, usable uh, intersection. And that's what I mean, it's less, it's really less than two. So I think Je Je Jeff may appreciate this or not but as, as an engineer, but if, if any developer wants to add more land out there, let's see uh, to the north or to the east, uh, and they go to the utilities department, they're going to have to show how they're going, they're going to get their water and, where, and how they're going to handle their sewer. And if, if the lines that they have out there don't have the capacity, then they're not allowed to hook up, right, Jeff? You know, is that the way it happens? Okay. <laughs> However, when it comes to traffic, we can show the exact same thing is to show that our streets are capacity that we really, really can't handle more. But up to now, there is no... There's not even the slightest bit of thinking to say we're not going to add more traffic. In other words, we, we do it for utilities, but we, we see traffic, even though they're really conduits, the streets are really conduits for cars, we see it differently. Okay, does that, that make sense? So that, that's one of the things that I wanted to say is um, if we have a traffic impact analysis, it's not to stop development, but at least it's to make everyone aware is that if we grow more to an area, People will understand what's going to happen. It doesn't catch anybody by surprise. Well, that what you might be referring to also, Dan, in that regards is uh, the traf when the traffic impact analysis comes into play, and I, and and if traffic impact analysis can be started as early as the as the planning stage or the master plan stage, um, we may be able to, as a city, be able to address some of the. Um, future concerns up front so that the development understands what needs to be done ahead of time. And that's like what they do with the water planning for the water system and so forth. Another area that we probably need to focus on in developing, I think a, a good traffic impact analysis ordinance is some kind of public private partnership arrangement that um, if a developer wishes to come in and do an improvement, there's an economic de development boost that by doing so, Therefore, the city accepts and recognizes that. So they're willing to contribute at some participation level to improve the uh, final outcome of the traffic in, in that master plan, let's just say. Right, right. So uh, what are other ways to, one, to address it early, and two, to, to look for the city, because if you're just going to face all the burden on the individual um, developing, then that just passes the burden straight on to the, to the, to the taxpayer or person buying the land. So 
I think that uh, if the city is forward thinking and would like to continue to grow with any prosper economically, they would have um, still require some cost to burden by the developer. Okay. Um, if, if any of you get a chance uh, after you see those videos, um, there's several, I guess, documents that talk about rough proportionality. That's where a developer is only required to pay his proportion of the improvements. But uh, th th this, I don't know if you guys can see, this is an example of one right here. Can you read that? Uh, this is just one example that I took off the internet. But uh, in, in it, it describes the court's interpretation of certain cities that would require a developer to pay. And I, I wanted just to give a couple of quotes on, on, on how they called it is that uh, when the city is asking for things that are not proportional, one of the courts said it was an out and out plan of extortion. Okay. When, when the city's asked for things. And the other one was, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Sorry, I had it here in a second ago. I'm sorry, but I lost it. But it, it, it basically talks about that the city, uh, for instance, if you go to the city and you want to develop a piece of land, then they start saying, okay, well, to develop, to get, for us to give you the building permit and allow you to plat it, you got to give us 10 feet of your right of way in front because it's the city is going to make this into a major arterial. You got to build this much of the street, that kind of things. And, and they, they call it regu regulatory leveraging. In other words, uh, while the property is left alone, there's no, they don't ask for anything. But once you start asking to develop your piece of property, then they hold you kind of hostage to those demands if you want to develop your property. Does that make sense? I'm not seeing Affirmative. Right. That's not Affirmative, yes. Okay. I want to make sure I was not seeing a bunch of blank faces. Um, and that's what we want to try and do here is, is uh, the, the law says that whatever developer contributes to the to the city's system of infrastructure has to be proportionate to what is what they're paying now the impact fees that's a separate issue but as far as what they pay for when they're doing uh, a development uh, so that's something we, we need to start looking into and the first step of that is to have a, a tia because that's the part that tells the city what the proportionality is going to be so like city of san antonio has those two things tied together but what i'm trying to do is make it easier let's first do the traffic impact analysis ordinance we can agree on that uh and then we'll find out a way to add the proportionality part to it it's a separate calculation it's uh the the city has to have a number we say, okay, if your development is going to cause you know X amount of vehicles per day, then it, this is this is how much you should contribute to the roadway. But that has to be worked out still. That has to go simultaneously. Would you not agree, um, Dan? Because I mean, you can't. If we have, let's say, we all agree on a traffic impact ordinance, so then we all agree on, on the ordinance. But then the developer, then that says who has to put in those improvements. Well, then that proportionality agreement has to be. Uh, yes. Yeah, the, 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 the reason I just want to do the, the TIA in order to first uh, and, and try to separate just first is to simplify it. And then, uh, like I said, the planning department is doing their recode right now. So that, that that's part of it there. And they'll be working on the impact fee part of that. So. Too, so that that's the part it's, it's really got to still be worked out how the city of Laredo wants to do that. But I don't want to wait until that part's done before I start doing this. You know, um, the city the, in talking to the city of San Antonio, when they came up with their TA ordinance, they had to go back and forth to the development community for quite a bit just to agree on what numbers triggered a level one, what numbers trigger level two, that, those kind of things. So I want to at least have that part of it done, uh, even though it may not have any any meat to it as far as what's going to happen with it. But we do want to have something ready so that when the rest of it kicks in, it's already just ready to be uh, added to it. But uh, if you guys feel that it needs to be simultaneous, then we can start doing that. 
So let me ask a question. So as far as like from the scope of this committee and, and uh, what, what is needed and, and that this discussion is located in the section of the agenda, uh, discussion and possible recommendation, uh, what recommendation are we being requested to provide specifically? Uh, well, like I said, I was, I was hoping to get ideas on, on what you want to see. For instance, you're, you're like Jeff saying, let's have these both these things go at, at the same time. That's the recommendation I'm looking for. Uh, I wanted to simplify it, but if we need to go ahead and kickstart both of them at the same time, that's something we can do. Um, the recommendation could be for me to come back with the city of San Antonio and the city of Austin and possibly show you the differences between those two. Uh, like I said, I, I, I didn't want to bring those to you today because I didn't want to bias anybody in one way or the other. I want to see what ideas you had first. Um, that could be another recommendation. Okay, and uh, apologies uh, when you say that uh, looking looking at both of them at the same time, you're referring to the, the TIA and what else? Uh, the rough proportionality calculations. In other words, the the rough proportionality is is by law. Okay, and it, it's kind of a uh, it's it's a very simple uh, a very simple uh, idea. Is just that the developer is not going to pay more than what he should be paying based on how much impact he's having. <clears throat> to get to that number, the courts have said there's really no exact way of calculating it, but it needs to be um, uniform and it needs to have some engineering basis to it. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can show you how the city of San Antonio does it. Uh, I can show you how the city of uh, Austin does it, maybe just in table form, show you the differences and how, and how they're doing it, um, if that's what you want to see. Um, well, I think everyone should weigh in. Personally, it's, it, it's I'll admit, I'll admit a, a bias. Um, it's hard for me to think in terms of as a, as a party who could be affected by a, a TIA. I, you know, it's, it's hard for me to separate the two, the, the financial impact uh, as a party that may, you know, need to need to participate in a TIA in some way in the future and, and how that cost would be um, assessed. Uh, if, if we look at them separately, you know, before we would get to a point of recommending action, I think we would need to, we, we would need to see the both. Okay. Um, I understand where you're coming from, but this is, it's, it's almost kind of like a two edged sword, you know, to use a cliche. Um, let, let's say for instance, you, you had a piece of property, uh, off of Killam and you wanted to develop it. And the city says, well, to do, to allow you to develop it. You're going to have to build this road. You're going to have to build a whole new road because these roads already are congested and we need more ways to get out. And you're going to say, well, I mean, I'm only contributing another hundred, hundred cars or hundred trucks per, per hour in the peak hour. But in the past, that's the way it's, it's been working. You know, it wasn't proportional to how small a piece of property. It just happened to be that you were the person that's on that thoroughfare. Does that make sense? So a TIA can either you know, it, it, I, I think you were kind of afraid that it goes against you, but in, in reality, it would show that your contribution to the existing traffic is not as much as what is being asked of you. Does that make sense? I follow, I follow your point. Yeah. And it, it, it really, like I said, the, the reason I wanted to separate it out, but we can do concurrently, is just so we know as a city that we're going to be adding a lot more traffic to a certain road and so that nobody is shocked and then uh, it, it even goes as far as for us to have better discussions with text dot um i'll give you a good example uh cuatro vientos road um the city is already in plans to put a sports complex out there uh in south Arita. i think everyone knows about that there's committee i mean it's been on the council meetings etc and so the 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 city has plans to connect that sports complex to Cuatro Vientos Road. Okay. Um, someone needs to tell TxDOT, this are our plans to put a park out there. We're going to add this much traffic. It's possible that on any given weekend, we may have a super uh, Pony League baseball tournament and we'd have this many cars. So rather than wait for that all to happen and then see a bunch of cars on Cuatro Vientos backing up, we need to work with TxDOT say, okay, this is coming. So the city is going to do their own tra traffic impact analysis on that on that complex. 
And all it is, is just so that everyone knows where the traffic's gonna come from, where the traffic's gonna go, and to see if existing streets that we plan on using can even accommodate that because there's other developments that are counting on using that road also, those roads. Okay. So it's really just to get a better picture of how the city's growing, how we're gonna connect, to see that we're gonna need more streets, and so plans can start being made for it. And the same thing with get to ask text out, hey. The aggregate interchange for the next 20 years. Mr. McGee, this is Adrian. I have a question for you. How would this apply to federal projects or state projects? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Sorry. Can you get into for that? Example, hypothetically speaking, let's just say the federal government is going to build a courthouse downtown or something. Would, 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 they, would this apply to them as well? considering that it is going to impact traffic around that courthouse or or even us for the university if we expand in the future how, how would that what would the would the uh did, would the developer or the contractor still be responsible for the for the tia yeah well uh, i'm going to answer it just based on my experience i really don't know the law when it comes to the federal government uh but when i was elsewhere i'm sorry to keep saying that way but uh there was a situation where we had a post office on one of our Texas text dot roads. And I found out really, really fast that the federal government is exempt from our regulations, from state regulations. Uh, so there, there was no way to enforce that. I don't know if that's the case when it comes to uh, any federal development still, but it, it would make it would be a good thing to at least discuss with any developer, whether it's the university. Uh, state university or the federal government to say, hey guys, you're gonna have a, a, a problem with this. And then for instance, that that post office that I mentioned, um, they could build a driveway without our permission with the text dot, but the road belonged to text dot. So I, I could put a median across it and block their entrance and they couldn't say anything about it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. So, it, so it behooves everybody to work together. In other words, uh, and I'll give you an example. I guess uh, you, you work at TAMU, right? The main Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So but that's a very, very good example of a lot of traffic coming all out in one, one connection. Uh, there was a smaller one put in, but it's not signalized. And uh, it, it was kind of done as an afterthought uh, years later. But that, that's the location that probably could have benefited from several more connections. If, if a traffic impact analysis had been done, then at least the decisions could have been made to say, you know what, guys, we're going to grow up to this much. And when we get to the point where we have 10,000 students, then we need to come up with the money to do this other intersection. Correct. 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 Yeah, that, that makes sense, Mr. McGee. Yeah. yeah. But since there's, there's no thinking into it, then we're always kind of uh, retroactively looking into fixing these problems as opposed to anticipating them. I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, and I'd, I'd like to see um, <coughs> some information on traffic impact analysis for various cities along the border region, not necessarily San Antonio or Austin. Um, I want to like to see some that may have to deal with the trucks and the border crossings uh, that we have. Like, like say El Paso, McAllen maybe, or Brownsville? All right. Yes, sir. Just to understand, just to understand if they have any different um, uh, verbiage related to. Uh, uh, that's a great, that's a great idea. That's a very good idea. Yeah, San, San Antonio may have more trucks, honestly, if you put them all together, but they don't have the concentration of trucks that we do. Yeah, a very good idea. Okay. On another note, I'd also like to see um, maybe a, a bullet point um, outline of what you are seeing as a, as a typical with, with most uh, TIA ordinances so that maybe we need to fill in the blanks, but most ordinances cover trip generation, most ordinances cover uh, traffic count requirement, most ordinances cover... Um, so the, the part the the parts of a TIA, yeah, the yeah. parts of the TIA. That way, we as the committee members can start to think about 
what we want to see in those various parts. Okay. And, and that was my reason for putting this in the agenda the way I did was uh, uh, th there's a, I guess a stigma, if, I, if I'm using the right word right, that the TIA is a bad thing, like I said, but it's just a way of everybody getting together and saying, we're going to we're going to generate all this traffic. We're going to keep growing. I mean, nobody wants to stop the traffic in Laredo from growing and development and, you know, residential and commercial and all that kind of stuff. Laredo wants to keep growing, but we just have to get a better handle on how we're growing. Not, not stop it at all, but just say, we need to do this. And the only way the private community and public uh, can get together on this is by saying, hey, guys, we're going to have a problem here. What are we going to do about it? And whether that involves, you know, uh, public private public partner private partnerships, we have to do that. Whether it involves, you know, uh, asking for more streets, whatever whatever the case may be. You know, one of the things you mentioned was the utilities department um, in relation to how they handle development and wanting uh, increased line sizes and the capacities. Uh, one thing that the utilities department has done um, in the past is they've worked with developers to say, okay, um, we, your, your development requires this much capacity. However, being a forward thinking, we know there's a potential for a development behind you. And therefore, we're willing to participate additionally to increase, um, to upsize um, your water system, sewer system to handle future growth. I think that um, we need to somehow identify options to allow that to occur as well with the traffic ordinance. Right, that's a very good point. In, in a roundabout way, that's what the real proportionality is gonna force things to happen. In other words, a developer comes in and, and he happens to be on a thoroughfare, you know, say a five lane section, and his piece is very small so who's going to pick up the other piece? You know, the city say, okay, we'll build part of it now. And then when the next developer outside of that comes in, then he'll pay us back, that kind of thing. But the only way we can even start thinking about those is if we have numbers that say, this is how much we're going to grow in that area. Just on another note, without, without talking too technical, um, some of the things that the TIA probably needs to look at is is the when when we're talking about submittals and what's acceptable is we need to be looking at our the level of levels of service and what the city may view as an, a, an appropriate level of service a that they they are going to force a level of service a on all developers that's not reasonable so I think the we need to understand that there will be traffic anyway but at, at some level of services would be the requirement of the developer and maybe the city, if the city wants to change it to a level of service C to a level of service A, then that's where their participation may need to happen. And uh, maybe I'm being a little too technical for the for the group, but but we need to look at, at what is reasonable and fair to continue with economic growth and the development and the impacts that, the, that those costs to get to the perfect intersection is going to be on the developers where we don't want to force that down their throat. Right. right. And, and, and in a lot of cases, it just come you know, for even forgetting about levels of service saying this, this area is operating at this, you know, uh, this level of delay, for instance, uh, which a level of service is based off. Let's say, you know, it, let's say we're at an F, but the, you know, it's a 60 second delay. Well, say we're ready an F. We just don't want to make it, you know, a, a worse F. You know, we don't want to go from 60 seconds of delay to 120 seconds of delay. So what mitigation would the developer be responsible for just to keep it at the same level? Forget about trying to get an A, B, or C, which are very good level of service. It's just don't make it any worse. What are you going to do about it? That kind of looking at it. Okay. Any other ideas, guys? Uh, ladies? Lady? Uh, give me a second, Mr. Erica.
Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. Frankie, my question is, who would the TIA committee be and who pays for their services if, if they were to be in the uh, okay. work? Uh, who, who pays for the TIA? Yeah, yeah who, who would be the committee for the TIA? How are those people chosen to, to look over everything? Well, the I guess uh, as far as who, who does the TIA, that would be the responsibility of the developer. And that, 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 that's the reason that we um, probably want to look at the different types of TIAs because if you have a small development, it doesn't require that much. It's a simple TIA, just a few numbers. Uh, but if you have a 100 hundred acre commercial development with you know 20 driveways and that's a lot more complex so that's we would ask for more but the developer is responsible for the cost of that now uh you were asking about a committee and really you're looking at the, the staff right now <laughs> right but, uh, but uh, go ahead go ahead yes sir so tia already exists so they would just the developer would hire that that that, that uh entity to, to do it, the TIA to, to check whatever development they're going to do. Well, anyways, if you, let's say you have a development, 50 acres you want to do on Highway 59, okay? Yeah. So if the TIA ordinance is there, I'm going to ask you, I, I need you to tell me how many, how much traffic you're, you're going to anticipate to put on the road. So you would have hire a traffic engineer and then you work out a fee with him and he's, he's okay. going to He's going to follow whatever format we give him in the city and he's going to say okay i'm going to charge you x amount and then he's going to give me those numbers and then i review it and then agree with him or disagree until we get something and okay. that would be it all right understood that's a simple version all right no, i understand that. so in, in a roundabout way i'm giving myself a lot more work <laughs> you're not going to get a race <laughs> well, that will never happen but if you want to put a good word in for with your councilman i i, I won't I won't bother you about it. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, yeah, but uh, okay, yeah, I, I think, you know, even though it's going to be a lot more work for me and my staff, uh, I think it's something that has to happen. Um, the, the growth has happened, uh, not randomly. We, we all see it happening, but there really is no accounting for it. You know, we, we until until we get to a situation where everything is bottled up and that's where people start complaining, by that time, not that it's too late, but it takes a while to fix things. Right. Right. Okay. So, so the developer is the one that's going to be paying for for whatever they're going to want to do. Well, and, and that that's part of the other the other equation that Jeff was saying is that one 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 piece is to tell me how much traffic you're going to generate, and then the other piece is there's another calculation that says how much you're going to be responsible for. In other words, go back to the example: you're going to develop 50 acres on Highway 59. And then we're gonna tell you, well, you're gonna to have to add six more lanes to Highway 59. And you say, well, I can't afford that's that's gonna cost more than my whole development. Yeah, yeah. So that's not proportional to what you're doing. Of course. Okay. All right. It's a very exaggerated example, but that, that's no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's <clears throat> so, Mr. McGee, I'd like to give the council, uh, the council, the uh, committee uh, members. Uh, an opportunity to weigh in if I've missed anything here, but I, I believe we can kind of summarize the recommendations um, in uh, what uh, Vice Chairman Quigg mentioned of just please come back with a, uh, a summary breakdown of the elements contained within a TIA so we can completely understand that. And then likely just a kind of a heads up comment, the, the committee would also be interested to see the uh you use the term to describe it but the uh the, the proportionality mm -hmm. of, uh aspect of cost um before a, a an, an action might be taken uh we'd like to see that, that uh, aspect as well will do and please anyone else on the committee uh weigh in on anything that i've misstated or that you want you'd like to add Okay, I think that closes out that point. Mr. McGee, does that uh, take care of what you were interested in? Yes, sir. I appreciate point? it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last item on the agenda is open discussion for ideas and plans of uh, what the committee wants to see in the future. So, you know, what, what we would like, the, the direction that the committee would like to see, uh, I guess, our, our work go on this committee.
So I guess <clears throat> just the time for brainstorming and open ideas, recommendations. Either that or uh, if you, we can talk about it next time. If you want to go back to your councilman and get in, and get ideas together with him or her and see what you would want to see us to look at. Um, there's a lot of requests for, for some, uh, for example, uh, we get a lot, a lot of requests for uh, traffic calm, speed humps. Uh, in, in some people have their opinion that we have too many and some people want a lot more. So is that an area of concern? Uh, more striping throughout the city, uh, more signage. Uh, you know, we're trying to get an idea of what's on the mind of the uh, everyone else, except you know, as traffic engineers, we look at the world one way and the public may see it a different way. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, speaking with council members is a great idea. Uh, looking around your immediate sphere of uh, knowledge and and you know where where are you where are you transit the city. Keep a, a vigilant eye on on issues. Uh, something that was great that we were doing for a little while was uh, each meeting a particular committee member would be charged with coming in with uh, input from their area, from their district, um, and uh, you know that that might be something to to dust off and and uh, start back up. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any volunteers for the next meeting? <laughs> Is there anything concerning with traffic and safety? Correct. Yeah, if you see, you know, long lines around a school or Yeah, you know. I'll, I can I can do next month. I'll see my I'm in district three, so I'll see if there's something that's needed at the moment. I can't think of anything, but I'll look around between now and then and uh, I'll be glad to put in you know, if I see something that I'd like to address, I'll I'll do it at the next meeting for District Three. That's a good idea. Why don't we start with District Three, then four, five, six, and we just we we'll just go through this from there now, from there on. That's a good idea. All righty. All right. Thanks. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, taking advantage of the open discussion section, um, I do want to let the committee know that um, uh, my wife and I will be. Uh, relocating outside of Laredo in the near future. Um, I may be around for a, one more meeting, um, but I, I guess I would just ask for you know, proper protocol on a couple of aspects. Uh, one is that my, my personal assignment expired in November of 2020 with the change of uh, district councilman. I have not uh, contacted Ms. Perez yet to, to let her know of, of, of that situation. Uh, it is something I intend to do, but um, you know, does does the expiration of my assignment just automatically terminate me, or do I need to resign, or how, how does what, what's the protocol for the for the committee? I'm not familiar with the bylaws either. Well, we'll we'll have to do some research on that. Uh, we'll get, we'll get you an answer. Okay, uh, I'm certainly willing to continue to serve while in town while I'm still a uh, a resident of Laredo. Uh, that might be as many as one more meeting, depending on when it's scheduled. Okay, we'll we'll contact you and see what we find out. Thank you. Good luck to you, Mr. Akers. You're a great man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't Thank you. It. Same here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any any further comments, input on in the open discussion section of our agenda? If I, can just, if I can just thank everyone for making time today, I really appreciate it. I know these are tough times and it's kind of hard to uh, use technology to get together this way until we get used to it and we're kind of tripping on each other. So I, I thank you for your patience and just ask your indulgence. Um, I did want to ask, uh, uh, and we, we can do this by uh, a little survey by email just to see if we continue doing these monthly or bi-monthly, whatever you guys want to do, but we'll send out an email with your and ask you for your thoughts on them. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Thank if you. If there are no, if there are no further um, comments in the open discussion section of our agenda, that brings us to adjournment, and we will call the meeting adjourned at this point. Thanks, everyone, for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.